Hey guys, Chet Womack here from theprepperproject.com and in this video I wanted to share with you two types of EMP proof generators that you can use to not necessarily run your house but run a lot of critical equipment like um, charging up power tools, running radios if they die, um, charging batteries if all of a sudden an EMP were to take out the grid and you don't have the ability to charge batteries, uh, or how to just in short term basis, if you're just on a couple day power outage or a week power outage, you know, run, run your freezer, run your fridge, those sorts of things. So here's, here's how this works. So this journey started because I wanted a solar generator. This is a solar generator right here. Uh, it's not hooked up to a solar panel right now, but I wanted some backup power because I bought an off-the-shelf one for about 1800 bucks, and I ended up losing a thousand dollars on that because it broke after a year it was a piece of garbage and so i built my own i built this to my specifications um and uh we we sell the plans to these as well there's probably a link below this video but the reason i want to bring this up is because after i built this i was like oh i want it to be emp proof so here's what i did i got this this is a military spec it's called a faraday bag and there's a military specification that says the military says this bag is pretty much going to help keep an EMP out of anything that's inside here and protect it, okay? And that's key because there's two parts inside a solar generator that will die if an EMP happens. And in this video, I want to talk to you about one of them. So the first one is this. This is an inverter, okay? This is what takes the electricity and gives you the ability to power it coming off of a battery. The other part that I'll show you here is your battery charge controller. That's this piece right here. So what I do is I have two sets of these. I have one that stays on here, so this is always trickle charging my battery, keeping it good. And then I have one that I always keep in a Faraday bag along with an inverter. So I've got my inverter and my charge controller protected in a Faraday bag. And what that does give me the ability to do is simply when an EMP were to happen, all I gotta do is pull these out of the bag, put them into this unit, which is already here, that I've got plans to show you how to build, and I'd be back up and running with my solar generator, except for one problem, and that is that my solar panel, if an EMP attack were to have happened, would be fried. So, what I have that I also put in one of these bags is this. Now, this isn't weatherproof, even though it's raining, so I better make this quick. Uh, but this is a thermal electric generating device. It is designed to sit on top of a fireplace. And what I do when in my plans that show you how to build a solar generator is I show you how to wire one of these to your solar generator. So what it can do is when it's sitting on a hot fireplace, it can generate up to 45 watts of electricity to keep that battery trickle charging so that you have now a way to protect the power source to constantly keep batteries being charged. It's not a ton of power, but it's totally enough to keep radios, drill batteries, all those sorts of things running, and you now have a way to do that with an EMP-proof method, okay? So that's number one, EMP-proof generator. The second is this bad boy right here. This is a 19, oh, just about cut my fingers off. <laughs> 1969 Ford truck, and there's a debate out there. I'm not going to get into it. It doesn't really matter right now, but because when they built trucks where it used to be more mechanics, mechanical things instead of electronic based things, trucks that are pre you know, like mid 1970s and lower uh, that have mechanical parts that, that won't be fried with an electromagnetic pulse won't die. And so what you have here is a form of a generator. This is a generator. This is a motor that can generate electricity, and it does. It puts it right into this battery. And if you built the solar generator, and you have this part, and you have protected it inside a Faraday bag, all you have to do is hook up the device to the battery, And now, I, when I turn this truck on, after an EMP, I'd totally have a generator as long as I had fuel. Now, maybe you, uh, it's not the most economical way to build a generator, by the way. This truck, you'd want to make sure you got a good deal on it. But if an EMP fried a bunch of cars, go looking for one of these things, forage for one, whatever you want to do. And as long as you had an inverter, 
you can make electricity. And I'll show you, I'll show you how this works. All we do is it's plugged in, we get our cord, wherever our cord is. Our cord is, here's a cord. I plug it in and I will go turn the uh, car on and I'll show you how this works. Actually, I'm not gonna turn it on because then you wouldn't be able to hear me. So imagine the cars are running, it's the same type of thing, and it's charging this battery. And actually, when we're hooked up and I turn on this battery, it actually is already generating power. It's just draining it out of this car battery. But the battery would still work in an EMP as long as we protected these things. And now you can start to see that these things are charging. So if you were to come in close, this radio is charging. If you can see that red light, um, we got a blinking light here. This is charging. Um, so we could run the drill. And I'd highly recommend that you, you get a battery charger to, so you know you could charge your D batteries, hook them up, put these in here, keep this protected in a Faraday bag, and you can have all sorts of things protected. These are motion activated security lights that are protected in here, all sorts of things. But now I can protect them with two types of EMP proof generators. Either the truck generator, as long as you got an inverter, or the solar generator, with the thermal electric generator that works on a fireplace. Now, two more notes of things that I want you to pay attention to. One, I bought this 800 watt inverter for like, I think it was 80 bucks at just the local car shop store. Now, what you want to do, because it matters here, is you wanna make sure that you get the right size inverter for the things that you want to be able to power if an electromagnetic pulse took you out. So let's say one happened and boom, boom, you've got a freezer that you really want to keep food frozen, frozen until you have a way to preserve it. What you do, let's get shelter from this rain, keep my mic good. This is a kilowatt device. You can find these online. I'll put a link below. When you plug this in, uh, uh, it will tell you how much electricity the devices you're trying to run draw. So spend a couple of days Go figure out how much electricity devices you want to have an emergency are drawing, and you will get an electric output number that then tells you how nice of an inverter you want to go get. So for an example, this 800 watt in inverter isn't really big enough to run most fridges and freezers and those sorts of things. If I wanted to upgrade, spend a couple more, a couple hundred more dollars, it would, but this one currently isn't because this is my backup one just for a solar generator uh, for b minimum basics that I, that I keep out that I'm okay getting fried with an EMP because I've got another backup one. So that is the one thing I wanted to point out to you about choosing an inverter, use the kilowatt to find it. And then the second thing that you can do is you could, if you don't want your solar panels to die and you want them to be EMP proof, I highly recommend that you build an EMP proof shed. So it uses the same principles that the Faraday bag uses of the military spec stuff. But what it does is you can build them in a shed. It's protected, or you can build them in a closet and these sorts of things where you could put away one panel or two panels or more than that so that you could pull those back out after an EMP and use those as well as replacements to power the things in your life that you want to not die. Now, if you would like to know how to build an EMP proof shed or an EMP proof closet, those sorts of things, then what we have done is we went out and we actually filmed a whole DVD. It's called Home Improvement, uh, spelled EMP Improvement. And it's done with a guy who's built an amazing off-grid property where it's EMP proof as much as I've ever seen anybody do. His name's Scott Hunt. Uh, he's been on the Doomsday Prepper show. He's been on a lot of these different shows and he helped create a DVD with us on how to actually build one of these sheds for EMP proofing big things, big solar panels, your generators, your that type of big stuff, freezers you don't wanna die, fridges you don't wanna buy. Um, it's awesome, if you wanna check that out, the link below is, is there as well, but either way, go get a small inverter and at least have the ability to run a truck to generate a little bit of power in your life in a crisis. You never know the kinds of electric generation abilities that that could mean for saving your life if that sentence even makes sense. But just a little bit of power goes a long way. So hopefully you enjoyed, guys. Like it, subscribe, whatever. And I will see you next time, another video.